Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. It's a pleasure to be with you on a Wednesday night. And always glad to welcome back my voluble friend, Ann Coulter, who joins us now. Uh, I think she is currently the, in addition to be the author of more than a dozen fantastic books and a weekly column and all kinds of other great things. And she shows up and makes liberals mad and conservatives as well. I understand she is now with a group called PEEP. People for the Ethical Eating of Pangolins, to which she has taken <laughs> she's taken a real shine to these pangolins. You you love those little guys, don't you? <laughs> I love those little guys. They're very cute. <laughs> I want you to start that group, Peep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, actually PETA has stepped forward. They're just get not getting a whole lot of stress. I mean all these I wrote about this a few weeks ago, all these endangered species. Um some have actually gone extinct because of the um, ridiculous primitive beliefs of the Chinese, um, which is sort of the theme of my column this week. I don't, I don't think we need to trace this to a lab, um, which I do think, based on what we know now, is, is pretty dubious. Um, you don't have to believe what the Chinese are saying, as I, right. as I lay out in the column. But the main point is I, I, I get this sense that... that that at least among some of my friends, there's like this urgency to pin it on the lab because they want to be able to say, this is China's fault. And I keep saying, no, it is China's fault. You don't need a complicated theory about an accident in a lab or the level four bio lab. It's these wet markets. It's the wet markets of the wet, wet markets of the wet markets. Scientists have been warning about this for, for decades it's absolutely disgusting what goes on at these wet markets. Um, there is additional evidence um, from the genetic profile of the Wuhan virus. Um, 27 of the first 41 COVID-19 patients, the ones who contracted it in China, had been to the wet market. Um, and, and we don't need to go to the lab. We need to um, bring manufacturing home, shut down the borders, and treat shuttering the wet markets the same way we treated shutting down al-Qaeda camps. Well, I liked one of, your, one of the overarching themes on top of that is that America keeps stumbling into this People on the other side of the planet are just like us, trapped. Yeah. And they're not. I mean, b people in America don't eat bats, and they don't eat live wolf puppies, and they don't boil dogs alive. I've got a friend who's, who's that's one of his big causes these days, or has been since last year. Good. Uh, it, and, and it doesn't, well, because there's this lychee dog festival, and they just um, blow yeah. torches and all. Yeah, oh, he's so been so gross. He actually got a Democrat to introduce a bill on that, so sometimes the Democrats are useful. But the bottom line is they're not just like us. They are different, and sometimes the differences are charming and quaint, and sometimes they're disgusting and dangerous. But your point is, and I've kept myself open, whether it came from the lab or it came from the wet market, it's their fault because they knew the epidemic had hit their own population, they knew it was going to come to us, and they decided to lie for a period of time to get themselves ready for their epidemic, and maybe even to accidentally let the epidemic spill out of their borders so that if China takes a giant economic hit, and the rest of the world does too, we all get knocked right. down 10 notches and China's no worse off, right? Totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's what has made me suspicious, in addition to the fact that the <laughs> the only two Trump supporters that seem to are um, government officials, anyway, who are pushing the lab theory are Tom Cotton and Mike Pompeo, the Secretary of State, um, love a lot of things Cotton says, but both of them are big neocons. And there is this idea that really influences a lot of things, including whether we're permanently at war with the rest of the world, um, which is what, what you just said, this idea that, oh, all cultures are alike, and we just need to free the Iraqis from, from this, their horrible, vile rulers. I mean, just need to free the Afghanis. And I'm sure you know about it. I linked to it in the column. And, it, you know, for one I think it's been 20 years in Afghanistan, and it doesn't look any better. But also, we get over there and find out that they're, you know, they're all a bunch of pederasts, and our troops yep. are instructed not to stop the Afghani warlords and men from buggering tiny little boys, infant boys. I'm sorry to talk about this on radio, but much like the eating of live octopus, no, the rest of the world is not like us. Wish them luck, <laughs> but I don't want them to immigrate here. I don't want 
I mean, masses of them, obviously. I have lots of immigrant friends, and I love them. Um, but, but we've gotten a lot now, and I don't want to go to war to remove their rulers. And I just feel like we're inching up to that with this lab theory that, no, the poor, suffering Chinese, it's just the evil chai with their, with their, with their, with their stinking bio labs. No, it's the wet markets. They're disgusting. They've got to be shut down. Well, as you said, it, 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 whether it came from a lab or came from the market, no matter which theory you believe, skip past that one too. Right, did, they lie, right. did they lie to us and keep us in the dark to their benefit and our and our uh, you know our harm? Uh, and, and if the answer to that is yes, the Chinese pleading for us to stop the blame game. In a lot of cases, and I think the blame game is ridiculous, um, and it doesn't benefit anybody. But in this case, if you've got people who've kept us in the dark and kept us in the dark, and it's to hurt us and help them, then you've got to stop that. Even on a personal level, you'd know that if you had a colleague or a friend who kept lying to you to benefit himself and hurt you deliberately, or one or the other or both, you'd say, I can't associate with you anymore because you keep doing this. And until you knock it off, we're, and, and this is on the scale of trillions of dollars, isn't it? No, that's absolutely true. And conversely, I'd say even if they hadn't lied to us, um, we have to shut down the wet markets. We've had pan- viral pandemic after viral pandemic, um, all kinds of viruses um, hitting the world, hitting our, our, our livestock because of these wet markets. And even if they had not turned around and lied to us, our objective going forward has got to be to shut down the wet markets. They did briefly after SARS, another one of the ones, the coronaviruses that came from the wet markets. Um, but then, you know, the people demanded it. That wasn't the Chinese insist or the Chinese Communist Party saying, no, this is part of our cultural tradition. No, that you know, you have to have a little bread and circuses for the people. The people demanded the wet markets. Um, not only did the Chinese Communists allow them to start up again, but who, um, World Health Organization said, fine, go ahead, start up these, these disease-ridden, disgusting markets. And look, I mean, I know when we get into food and cultural practices, everybody gets uncomfortable because, it's like, I like bacon, and, of course, there are certain people who say, well, that you can't eat that, and, 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 and if we followed India's prescriptions, I would not never have a cheeseburger again. Uh, so <laughs> we, we don't want to go there. But you know what, Ann? I used to like a cannibal sandwich, which was ground round with horseradish and mustard on a, on a piece of bread. And people said, and that was when you could trust the ground round. Now, eh, not so much, so I cook it. You know, but, but the fact is, somebody might say, well, that's disgusting. Well, I like the taste of it, so I, I don't do it anymore. And I'll admit, I've given up that cultural practice. It's not that near and dear to my heart. But <laughs> I am concerned when, when things like this get going and then they become the issue and all they do is take away from your your central point, which is we can't be nearly as dependent on China. China is not a good player. They will work to cross purposes to the United States' best interests. And even if you thought about how you dealt with somebody in your own community, would you keep doing business with somebody who keeps cheating you and keeps hurting you and your family? And the answer is no. You'd stop doing business with them in a heartbeat, and I think we ought to do this just as you suggest. Distance ourselves from China. Then they can either reform their behavior because they want to do business with us, or they can keep on with the crazy food, uh, and, and, uh, and, and the rest of the world can decide if they want to associate with that kind of thing or not. Yes, 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 the rest of the world is still alive. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, does it stun you? As much as I think some of the shutdown has has gone too far now, and there are ways, we're going to have to find ways to reopen, the fact that right now we're still losing 2,000 people a day is a stunner. Yes, yes. Um, Less of a stunner when you look at, I I just tweeted before coming on, um, before calling in, um, there are about a half dozen states um, that were specifically sending COVID patients to the nursing homes. Yep. It wasn't just Cuomo. It wasn't just New York. I mean, two, uh, uh, an enormous number of all of the COVID cases, more than half, are from the Northeast. And a lot of them are these blue governors who have never had real jobs, don't care about the economy, um, but they like bossing people around. And gosh, when they're, when they're you know, masters of the universe, their decisions have not been particularly good. 
No, and including that jack wagon de Blasio who tells everybody, along with uh, with Chris Cuomo, who both tell everybody, you have to stay home, but I can go to the Hamptons and I can go wander around anytime I want. Read her column. It's a must read. It's Ann Coulter. You can go to her website as well. She writes great books. I've read them. They're fantastic. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to The Lars Larson Show.